Welcome to Party Branding, an occasional series where we at Cannings Purple take a look at Australian political branding over the last five decades. My name's Jamie Wilkinson, and today we are focusing on the Liberal Party of Australia. And we're beginning in the early 70s, when the notion of branding as we know it today really didn't exist for the Liberals. Possibly they had a logo, but hours of searching through archives and photo libraries haven't revealed a consistent logo in any of the images, flyers or marketing collateral of the time. Which doesn't mean they weren't representing themselves visually. They were, just not with any branding consistency. Here's a, shall we say, Gun Ho poster from 1970 for David Gunn and a decidedly different looking selection of flyers from 1975, still with no logo or consistent branding. In fact, the first time we do see some consistency in format is this bumper sticker from 1975 and on the back of a flyer for a young and sprightly Alan Jones in 1977. So by the mid 70s, the Liberal Party had the beginnings of a look for their collateral, although it was piecemeal at best first half of this decade saw a plethora of leaders come and go. John Gorton resigned as Prime Minister in 1971 and was succeeded by William McMahon, who lost the 1972 election to Labour's brand powerhouse Gough Whitlam and the It's Time campaign. The Liberals were hopelessly outbranded in that campaign, and you can see how in our ALP party branding video. The Liberals' response to the It's Time campaign was to say, apparently with no irony, not yet, it's not. Although they did also use right today, right for your future. But they did learn from their mistakes, and in the 1975 election, they launched their Turn on the Lights campaign videos, copying the celebrity-filled Labour brand strategy from the previous election, complete with Peter Brock. But without the personal focus on their leader at the time, Malcolm Fraser, the anti-Labour slogan, this is the mess we're going to clear up, and think again, vote Liberal, your future depends on it, appealed to disillusioned Labour voters and also perhaps the Governor-General. And so it wasn't until 1980 that we saw the first images of the now familiar, more modern Liberal logo. And aside from occasionally tweaking the colours, the brand has remained largely unchanged for more than three decades. The iconic, bold, condensed, slanted text in capitals with L-shaped blocks depict a brand suggestive of moving forwards, pushing forwards. It's a strong, solid and serious logo with an emphasis on leadership. In this 1980 photograph of Malcolm Fraser's policy speech, the brand fits really well with the lead on liberal headline used to win the 1980 election. Fraser's austerity measures made them unpopular, however, and many gave this new brand the bird. It's for others to decide whether Graft was indeed given a go, but I'd hate to be the one to tell him that the voters wouldn't. For the most part, though, it was a brave new branding era full of youthful exuberance, ill-fitting hats and high-waisted jeans. And some would say the brand took on a more Americanized tone in the early 80s. In 1983, it was another matter, however. The Liberals ran with, we're not waiting for the world, but were defeated by Bob Hawke and began a 12-year exile from power. Andrew Peacock and John Howard battled over the leadership of the party, while slogans during this period included Stand up for your family, vote liberal, get in front again, and incentivization, whatever that meant. One of best-known copywriters at the time in a Canberra Times article stated that he thought masturbation would be a more suitable slogan because it's a waste of time too. Anyway, incentivization didn't go down too well as a slogan and Australians remained unconvinced. Still not sure what the incentivization was for wearing those hats, though. At the start of the 90s, never dawned on the Liberal Party to update their logo. The colour was massaged to be a little darker, more prestigious perhaps, but then it was mainly left alone. And in 1993, when Hewson released his fight back policy and video, it was so lambasted by the government that they did an edited release in December of the same year. Key policies like the end of bulk billing and the introduction of a GST were ultimately adopted by the party, but the GST cake interview probably cost Houston the election, despite the infamous slogan, the answer is liberal. And his still life, life with Keating advertisement. His campaign also singled out women voters and promised to keep Medicare. When he was defeated, the political comeback king, John Howard, returned. 
And in 1996, Howard got to work with a campaign both attacking Labour and their union ties with It's Just Not Good Enough, Labour's Got to Go, Enough is Enough, and Only a Liberal Government Can Free Australia's Workforce. Other messaging at the time included the inclusive for all of us and we can do it together. John Howard won that election and enjoyed a total of four victories at the ballot box. In the 1998 federal election, the Liberal Party branding focused on their strength and leadership in troubled times. Despite For a Stronger Australia and Don't Go Back to Labour, Australia Can't Afford It, the Liberals did lose some ground to Labour and One Nation, but for the most part, Australia believed their messaging. As the saying goes, you can't improve on perfection, and it seems the Liberal Party feel that way about their logo. There is something to be said about a brand that resists being updated. Does it signify confidence and a focus on traditional values? Well, despite the physical logo not changing, midway through the 2000s, a lighter sky blue version was released, updating the feel of the brand, hinting at something more modern, light and trendy, perhaps. In the 2001 election, Liberals began positioning themselves as the economy experts, and they took their campaign online creating a series of micro-sites, the first of which attacked Kim Beasley for his flip-flops on policy, as well as again attacking the Labour Union connection and the confusing Knowledge Nation policy. Slogans like Keep Australia in Safe Hands and Heading in the Right Direction were also used in this campaign. Three years later, against a Latham-led opposition in 2004, the government targeted both his lack of experience and Labour's recent history. They led with Don't Take the Risk, and Latham will squeeze the fees, as well as protecting, securing, building Australia's future, and the Howard government delivers. The big moment of the noughties, though, was the Kevin 07 campaign, of course. The Liberals tried to position their branding as experienced leadership, but ended up being seen as old leadership when compared to the vibrant and modern Kevin Rudd brand. Using the slogans Australia's Choice and Don't Risk Rudd, they once again attempted to position Labour as an experience, but it just didn't work. Australia was ready for change, and just three years later, so were the Labour Party. Also of note in this decade is Malcolm Turnbull's first tweet from Twitter, the first Australian political party leader to do so, albeit with a message which was somewhat lacking in imagination. Nevertheless, the age of the social media campaign had begun, and social branding and personal branding with it. 2010 arrived, Kevin Rudd departed, Julia Gillard got a promotion, and the Liberal logo remained mainly static, a rock in the tempestuous waters of political change. But to stretch the analogy, it was a somewhat submerged rock, taking a back seat in almost all collateral from both the 2010 and 2013 election campaigns. Instead of the Liberal brand, we first meet our action contract. This was a legal-looking document that seemingly tried to avoid featuring the unpopular Tony Abbott, other than via that indecipherable signature. They also focused on the instability of the federal and state Labour governments, particularly regarding the ALP border policy. The Liberal strategy seemed to involve a lot of slogans as well. Stand up for real action. Our action contract. We can't afford more Labour. Stop the boats. End the waste, pay back the debt, stop the big new taxes. Someone in the Liberal Party also thought it was a good idea to print fake Greens voting advice cards, presumably on recycled paper. The Liberal campaign was as negative as Labour's was against Tony Abbott, and although the coalition closed the gap, it wasn't enough to win power. Rudd returned from the dead to lead Labour in the 2013 election, as well as using Labour's instability against them, Liberals used some slogans from the previous campaign, as well as Choose Real Change and A Stronger Australia, A Better Future. According to some sources, Labour's campaign was more than 75% negative messaging, compared with only 44% negative messaging for the Liberals. A brand that spends its time attacking its competitors is a risky gamble, and the coalition scrambled over the line to win the 2013 election. So, on to this election. Well, a change is as good as a holiday, so they say, but the Liberal logo hasn't stopped working in more than three and a half decades. The Liberal campaign this time round is predominantly a positive one, and that's probably a good branding tactic. It's certainly a relief from the negativity of the last two campaigns. The Liberal website is interesting and, from a branding perspective, offers a very different strategy to that of Labour's. They've imitated the more modern look of the Greens' recent branding and focus completely on Australian industry and landscapes for their imagery. 
It's somewhat lacking in people and faces, but still successful in feeling emotive and really quite beautiful for an election campaign. Slogans seen so far include back our plan for a strong new economy, positioning the liberal path as innovative. And the use of the word new here is critical. Their campaign returns to the use of a stamp or crest. It looks very official, almost legally binding. A similar strategy to the losing 2010 campaign. But with a different leader, will it share the same fate? Overall, it's a different approach from a branding perspective to the Labour one, and perhaps marginally better, but time will tell. Despite saying that it's predominantly a positive campaign, given the Labour brand is leaning heavily on the personality of Bill Shorten, the Liberals have also released a campaign attacking his integrity. Will Australia buy the Liberal brand promises? Is it convincing? Well, good branding only sells a bad product once, and there are plenty of people in Australia who'll argue that there's still a bad taste in the mouth after the unpopularity of Tony Abbott. But the Liberal brand is about policies over personality. They've never been big on promoting their leaders, relying on the solid longevity and consistency of their own brand instead of leveraging the popularity of a short-term leader. That said, we don't see much of the Liberal logo in this election branding, although that's certainly a testament to the original branding team that the Liberal logo still works today. What was once seen as a lean-forward progressive icon has, after 35 years of barely any change, become more of a conservative one. And in a world focused on innovation and change, how does an increasingly conservative and change-resistant brand package itself to appeal to the public? I suppose that depends on the destinations the Liberals are ultimately aiming for. So, can this Liberal brand convince a sceptical Australia to trust it for a second term, or will they become roadkill underneath the Bill Shorten's Labour brand bus? Australia waits to vote, and to find out. Thanks for watching. If you missed our ALP political branding video, you can find it online at www.canningspurple.com.au.